Thank you, Chris. That was a lovely introduction. Chris, by the way, is one of the people who 20 years ago got me interested in Israel. <laughs> yeah, before you moved there. This cubicle was next to mine, and I thought, why is this crazy person always talking about Israel? What's that about? But 20 years later, here we are, Chris, both living in Israel. Well, four years ago, I saw this date on the calendar coming down the barrel at us and thinking, how can we best celebrate Israel's 70th anniversary? And I'd been reading a lot about Israel's founders, about Ben-Gurion, about Herzl, about Heim Weizmann, and I thought, you know, these are stories I didn't know, and these are stories probably most Americans didn't know. So, hey, what a great way to celebrate Israel's 70th anniversary. You know, tell the origin story. <clears throat> so I went to my boss, Gordon Robertson, and I said, look, I have this idea for the 70th anniversary in 2018. And I told him about it, and he said, that's a great idea but I don't want to wait till 2018, let's do it now. <laughs> so, 2015, we released that documentary called The Hope, did a few more, and then still, last year, we still have this date coming at us, and I'm thinking, okay, he's taken my idea away, what do we do now? So, I didn't have to worry, Gordon always has another idea. <laughs> so, we had been working on this documentary to life off and on, about Israeli humanitarian work, and he said, let's do this for the 70th anniversary. And my first reaction was, no. <laughs> Number one, I can't get that done in that amount of time. Number two, I want to do the origin story. That's, you know, 1948, that's the story. But, you know, the boss always wins, so <laughs> we got to work on to life. And um, as I got deeper into the scripting and into the shooting, I started to have a realization. Gordon had not been wrong about this. <laughs> Some might even say he was right. <laughs> and this was a great idea because as great a story as 1948 is, as great a story as the beginning of a country was, what's an even better story is what that country has become 70 years later. I mean, it's just amazing. And the more that I got into it, I thought this was even a way better idea than I had. So hats off to the boss. <laughs> in 1902, Zionist leader Theodor Herzl wrote a book that pictured his ideal of the future Israel, sort of a utopian ideal. And he made a pretty radical statement in it. He said, once I have witnessed the redemption of my people, the Jews, I wish also to assist in the redemption of Africa. It's a pretty profound statement in 1902. Um, Let's fast forward 50 years later. Golda Meir is the foreign minister of Israel in the 1950s. She has a meeting with her colleagues. You can just picture it. She pulls Herzl's book out of her little old lady purse, <laughs> reads them this line. And then she says to them, it has fallen on me to carry out the vision of Dr. Herzl. And that's exactly what she did in the 1950s. She spearheaded Israel's outreach to Africa with military training, agricultural training, everything like that, humanitarian work. So let's fast forward another 60 years. And we have a woman named Sivan Yari. And she is also carrying out the vision of Golda Meir and of Dr. Herzl. Sivan is a brilliant young woman with a degree from Columbia. Could have done anything with her life. But Sivan said, I can't rest because I know there are 600 million Africans who don't have water and who don't have power. And Sivan and her organization today, Innovation Africa, have given solar power and clean drinking water to a million people across Africa. What better way to fulfill the vision of the founders? <laughs> David Ben-Gurion, Israel's first prime minister, was especially proud of the Israeli army. It was his pride and joy. But you know what Ben-Gurion said? We're not going to be judged by our army. This is what the state of Israel will be judged by, by the moral character it imparts to its citizens, and by its fidelity and thought and act to that great commandment, thou shalt love thy neighbor. Now think about this for a minute. Ben-Gurion was a self-professed secular humanist, said he didn't believe in God. And this is a man who's saying, Israel is going to be judged by how well we keep God's commandment to love our neighbor. I like to think Ben-Gurion would have loved some of these people that we've been able to meet along the way. Lisa Miara is a grandmother from Jerusalem. You can see her there. 
She had a son who was in not one but two terrorist incidents in the Second Intifada. And she said, I can't rest knowing that there are people around the world who are so affected by terrorism. Lisa spends half her year in Kurdistan helping women and children who have been kidnapped by ISIS, giving them food, medical care, counseling, and as you can see, they're just love. She is truly living out the commandment to love her neighbor, and she's made the Kurdish people her neighbor, and we tell her story into life. And the surgeons of Save a Child's Heart, who have done more than 4,000 surgeries for children across the third world who couldn't otherwise afford it and who might die. 50%, hear this now, 50% of their patients are from the West Bank and Gaza. They're literal neighbors. You can see here, this is a young baby from Ramallah, four months old, got a brand new heart. Her mother is the woman on the right. And her mother, a Muslim woman from Ramallah, made the statement to us, we need more people like this in the world. Now, when's the last time you've heard a Muslim Arab say, we need more Jews in the world? <laughs> but she said it, and we tell their story into life. This is Dr. Tali Shaltiel from Israel. She's one of several Israeli doctors who went to the shores of Lesbos in Greece to help the Syrian refugees washing up on the shore. Now, this may not be a news flash to anyone, but Israel and Syria are technically at war still. And this is a young girl who told our cameras, 70 years ago, we were the ones coming in on the boats looking for a home and no one helped us. And if I have a chance to help these people now, I'm gonna do it. Because tomorrow it might be us. Now, Tally and these other women have taken that command to love your neighbor a step further. And they've taken their enemies and made them their neighbors. And we tell their story into life. In a few moments, you're gonna hear from our executive producer of the film and the CEO of the Christian Broadcasting Network, Gordon Robertson. But first, we wanted to show you just an excerpt from To Life. And what we're going to show you is the work of the, the amazing work of the IDF doctors in Nepal. In April 2015, a huge earthquake devastated the region. And the IDF was the first on the ground. They built an amazing field hospital. ISRA aid came in and helped with search and rescue. And we just wanted to show you a little bit of their amazing work. So if we can roll that story now. magnitude earthquake has hit Nepal near the capital city of Kathmandu. Major Nepal. new aftershock, magnitude 6.7. Uh, it's the worst Setting quake off. to hit Nepal in more than 80 years. And even Nepal desperation is turning to despair. It's more violent aftershocks rattle that region. the midday of uh, Saturday, literally we felt the earth shaking. So if we felt it in Delhi, I can't imagine how bad it was here in Kathmandu. The massive earthquake killed nearly 9,000 people and injured 22,000 more. In just a few moments, Hundreds of thousands of people had become homeless. The world mobilized to help. And among the first to arrive in Nepal were doctors from the Israel Defense Forces, or IDF. I got a phone call, middle of the night, you're going. We are now in Gangabu uh, district inside the city of Kathmandu, which is one of the worst 
areas hit by the earthquake on last Saturday. As you can see here, the devastation is just enormous and the recovery process will take a long time. Within 96 hours after the earthquake, we already have a field hospital here fully operational. The devastation in Nepal was extreme.